Now, let's talk about DMN. Okay, so data, I think it was data modeling notation. That's the other standard which is uh, utilized by uh, business process modeling systems as well. Okay, so sometimes the conditions that might allow a process instance to be routed uh, from uh, one path or another in the model can be quite complex. So as we've seen in some of the business process models we have, we have, uh, we might have different X or splits, we might have N splits and uh, or splits. Some of these become quite complex. So OMG, OMG stands for the Object Modeling Group. Um, OMG, uh, you may not may or may not be aware of the OMG group, but they're responsible for UML. Uh, UML is what you would have used when you did um, software engineering, did a whole lot of UML diagrams. The OMG group has become quite influential, influential and they've developed a decision model and notation, sorry, not data model, decision decision model and notation uh, standard, and that can be used for specifying the business rules in, um, in our business process model. So DMN, decision model and notation, it's got three parts for the specification of a business rule. And we talked about business rules before. It's got the decision requirements, it has a decision requirements graph, which is called a DRG, that describes how data is propagated between different decisions. It's got a simple expression language called SFIL, and that defines how values are extracted from variables, and it's got decision tables, DMN tables. Okay, so three components to decision model and notation standard, decisions requirement graph, simple expression language, and decision uh, decision, sorry, yeah, decision model and notation tables. It's a bit of a handful, all these things here. So the decision, uh, the tables might look like this. We have a table name, we've got some sort of heat indicator, we've got a completeness indicator. Uh, you might have priority indicators, A, B, C, D. Might have, um, you know, might have, say, annual income. We might have um, a table here where you might get a loan size based on your annual income. So these might be input entries over here. So your annual income will fall into one of these categories. And the loan size uh, is determined over here. And then you might get a grade, VG, GFP, and so on, an output entry down here. So you get a, a, a DMN, DMN table. And now let's talk about BPMSs. Um, we're almost at the end now. So look, we're not talking much about DMN and CMMN. It's a little bit outside, get, to get into that in, in a lot of detail, is a bit outside the scope of what we're really trying to do. But it's worthwhile just talking about them in general so that you are aware of their existence. And as you go from conceptual models down to those executable process models, then we need to go beyond BPMN into CMMN and DMN as well, just to... Uh, get everything we need to be able to execute those models. So again, look, we're not going into it in any detail. This is just an example of what a DMN and table might look like. We're not going to get into the language itself and we're not going to uh, look at decision requirement graphs. A little bit beyond the scope of what we want to do, but just be aware these things exist and uh, BPM in, in itself is not enough for uh, executable, uh, going to executable processes. The Victorian Institute of Technology has other great videos covering many different topics. Please check them out and thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe the video for more great content like this.